What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Sony A7S III autofocus, why I use it, and my autofocus settings for 95% of my shoots. So let's quickly go into my Sony autofocus settings. First of all, I always use AFC, which is autofocus continuous. I enable touch tracking so that I could touch on my screen and it'll track whatever I touch with my finger. I set the AF transition speed to four and I set the AF subject shift sensitivity to one and it says in parentheses, locked on. Now, why do I do this? By default, the transition speed is five and the AF subject sensitivity is set to maximum, which is like, I don't know. I think it's just all the way responsive. So the reason why I set it this way, especially the uh, shift sensitivity to one locked on is because majority of time I am filming human subjects or a, a very specific subject. I don't do a lot of like wide angle stuff. There's always a particular subject in the shot, which in this case, this shot is me. So when I select locked on, that means whatever I choose, either touch tracking with my finger or whatever the camera choose, in this case, me with my eye, it is going to lock onto that regardless of what I do uh, anywhere else. Like there's nothing um, I could really do to distract it from my face. Now, obviously Sony a7S III has great face and eye tracking and by default, it is pretty good at this already. But in the real world, um, when you're shooting, like to say a wedding and there's a bunch of other people in the shot, um, there's other things with a lot of contrast in the shot. At times, you may notice that the Sony a7S III autofocusing system might jump over to something else. Sometimes the box, like the eye box might go to a different spot, but then you notice that um, the actual image didn't lose focus on you. It's just something that um, it does. And occasionally it will focus on something else, especially when, like I said, the overall scene is a bit distracting. But with the locked on autofocus, it generally performs a hundred times better in those really complicated situations if you want it to focus on the subject that you want it to focus on. It's, you know, this works for me very greatly during like um, wedding reception dancing uh, because there's a lot of people there uh, where I want to make sure that it stays locked on, especially if I'm like doing creative shots where like I'm passing um, behind other things as it goes across the screen. I don't want it to like jump back and forth. Now, if the sensitivity was set to like high, it would, you know, tend to jump back and forth. So like the downside of having locked on one is doing videos like this, it's a lot harder for me to, you know, show stuff. See, like it's, it's really tough because it's, it's really wants to lock onto my, where it's at, even though there's no eye and really there's no face for it to look at. So you see, sometimes I film these YouTube videos and I'd forget to like, um, you know, reset the autofocus sensitivity settings and it will never, then I have to touch the screen just like that for it to lock on. Now, as you see, even though it will stay locked on to the camera and not my face because Right now, in these with these settings, the Sony A7S III will override the face and eye detection and base its autofocus priority on whatever I selected with my finger on the screen. And as you can see right now, it is locked on to the camera, even though my face is right there for it to grab eye autofocus, whatever. So this is great for you know wanting to make sure that. You, you are locked on focused to the subject that you want it to be focused on without hunting back and forth. That's why I choose the locked on subject sensitivity. And of course, turn on touch tracking on your camera. So now back to my trash face. So the other setting is the transition speed. And that's just how fast the camera goes from one subject to the next um, so 
by default is very snappy, which means when you touch the screen for it to focus on a particular subject from the other one, it's really quick. But if you slow it down, it'll be slower. It'll look more like a rack focus. I put it down one notch because um, default it is too snappy. And I feel like for running gun situations, which is what I do most of the time, I still need it to be pretty quick. Like I don't sit there and do, you know, there's maybe one scene in like a whole, like for example, wedding day where I would actually use rack focusing, like focus from one thing to the next. Most of the time, my shots are pretty consistent. It's really just autofocus tracking that I use a lot. And so I need it to be relatively quick. But if you want for it to do like a very nice smooth rack focus, then you could set that uh, transition speed to be a lot slower and it'll look very much like someone is rack focusing um, manually. So this is a quick example of my setting. So right now I have this camera here. Let's see. And this is, so this is how fast um, it focuses in terms of like one subject to the next, which is a bit snappy. And if I were to rack focus, I would just do it manually with the lens, but that's an option for you. If you want to do autofocus and have a rack focusing look, you can go ahead and set the transition speed to being very slow. I think one of the menu items for a lot of people, even myself, when I first um, bought the Sony A7S III is where to like turn on touch focusing. And it is actually not in the autofocus menu. It is on the over like settings menu, which is the briefcase uh, icon in the menu. And you have to go to touch operation and then you go to touch and you want to make sure that all of the touch uh, functions are on. So as you can see, you have to go to the briefcase and you have to make sure that um, touch operation is on and the uh, pretty much you got to turn on, you have to turn on the touch focusing, touch tracking, um, setting because by default this is off on the sony a7s3 so back to why i choose to autofocus instead of manual focusing one it's pretty much how i started okay i started in 2014 with the sony next six and i really was not trying to manual focus i re recognize that that's like a skill that you need to develop over time and i was trying to learn this thing really quick i jumped into shooting you know weddings like 2016 and I use autofocus. And even though the autofocus of the A7S III was not great back then, it was still better than Panasonic is today, in my opinion. Um, it was com comparable to what Canon had back then. And pretty much I was able to shoot and everything was in focus using Sony's just standard autofocus, just letting the camera do all the work for me, not touching, not setting all these things. I just left the default, it worked. So that's all I really know. And so I had a strong trust for Sony autofocus back then so now i have developed a really really strong autofocus trust uh with the sony a7s3 because the so everyone knows sony a7s3 autofocus is amazing and that's one thing you know if you have not used sony a7s3 autofocus if you're coming from panasonic uh black magic or one of those other professional cameras and you're trying to use the Sony A7S III, you have to learn to just trust the autofocus because you know it's going to work. You know that it's going to track. It's not going to hunt back and forth, which is what it's doing right now for me while I'm talking, right? It's not like hunting back and forth. It's locked on. Um, so that's one. Two, once you use autofocus, and I think guys who have the Sony A7S III or is using other cameras um, that does not have autofocus, is doing themselves a real disservice, especially if they're not shooting with the crew, if they're shooting by themselves. Because shooting with Sony, with great autofocus allows you to get shots that you normally would not be able to get doing manual focus. Uh, one, you can shoot a lot shallower depth of field to get that nice bokeh. You can shoot f1.2 with the Sony A7S III and that thing will be locked on and you know, can, there's no one that I know of that could do like, you know, a push in shot, like moving towards the subject and be able to manual focus at F1.2 on a gimbal by themselves without some type of assistant, without maybe doing two or three takes to make sure it's good. In my case with weddings, like I don't have time, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to bother the photographer or the client, the couple, uh, 
to like redo something, you know, like that's the last thing you want to do, especially if you're running on a time crunch in the area that I work in, you could have 10 or 15 minutes to get these shots. So if I'm sitting there having to retake, do retakes, it's like a huge downer for not only uh, the couple, the photographer in terms of their workflow and the, how they need to get their shots. And of course me, because I don't like bothering people. So one, I could get the shot one take, no problem, no need to go back. And the shots I get are more creative because I could do these push-ins, these nice sweeping, pale, relaxing shots, be all over the place, be able to move freely with my gimbal, knowing that no matter where I am, how far away I am from a subject, whatever aperture I'm at, whatever depth of field I'm at, that my subject will always be in focus. And that's how like I could make sure that the shots that I get stand out from like standard shots that you see most of the time in like other wedding films or just any film in general. Um, it really looks like, it makes my work more dynamic, my shots more dynamic. And when you have better dynamic shots, it's easier for you to have dynamic edits with more dynamic type of shots. And of course, there's all those other standard shots too that I have in my arsenal that I could use. So it's just um, more shots. And of course, and the other thing too is I'm able to get more shots, right? So sometimes the photographer, hey, you know, we're like walking on, oh, can you can you go over here and uh, you know pose real quick, uh, forehead to forehead, or give a quick kiss. And then I think normally, if I was a manual focusing person, you know. I probably have to be handheld one and I have to like, oh, make sure I get it. And if I do get it, great. But a lot of times like, you know, these things happen in like five seconds, right? And I cannot imagine if I was not on a gimbal with Sony a7S3 autofocus to be able to get a lot of these shots that I get now. So the photographer would find a nice spot who, who pose real quick. And I'm able to just take my gimbal, touch the screen and immediately the couple's in focus and then I could start doing a push-in shot with the gimbal, get the shot, and then move on with my life. Versus if I didn't have autofocus, and let's say because of that, I had to be like uh, handheld because you know obviously gimbal and autofocusing, no, or manual focusing with like the knob or with the lens is gonna be like super cumbersome and you probably won't get the shot. So you're probably walking around handheld and you have to get the manual focusing shot and you're probably gonna have to be at F2.8, F4, or something like that and you may or may not get that shot. You know, that's kind of up in the air. But for me, even though these the photographer will set up like these quick two, three second, four second shots, I know that I get the shot, okay? Yes, again, I could say, hey, can you guys stay there real quick? Let me just get this shot too. I don't like doing that, man. Like, it's just, it's just a downer. Like, if I could just get the shot when the photography is shot, move on with our lives, the better, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I wanna capture content, I want to be able to get good shots, but I also want the couple to enjoy their day, go enjoy their party, and not spend, you know, the whole sunset evening just getting shots and not even enjoying any time with their family and friends. So yeah, that is my autofocus settings for this A7S III, and that is why I use this autofocus when I film, and why I recommend everyone should, you know, in this day and age, start using autofocus. Uh, and if you think, because I use autofocus, I'm not a professional you know, filmmaker, videographer, or whatever, you go ahead and bounce some big old balls on your chin, I really don't give a crap. I do what I do and it works for me. If you wanna keep manual focusing, if you wanna keep uh, doing that standard stuff, have at it, man, it's to each his own. With that being said, guys, that is it for today. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was insightful. And if you like this kind of content, if you don't mind supporting my channel, please give this video a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Till next time, lighten up.